Okay, let's start today's lecture. Today's lecture is about the calibration of micro simulation models. And the outline of today only consists of two topics, LO checking and calibration. The first part is error checking. That means you have to check the errors in your input. The second part is calibration, which means you have to adjust the parameters of the simulation model. Uh, I mean, in a simulation model, uh, they typically provide some uh, default parameters, and those parameters can be changed, can be calibrated. And I will talk about that uh, later. So, in the error checking stage, I mean, in the big error checking stage, we have three sub-stages, or we can say we have three stages. The first stage is to review software, software errors. The second stage is to review the input. And the third stage is to review animation. And let me introduce them one by one. The first thing is called review software errors. So before you start to fix, to, to find any error in your model, you may first want to review the software uh, user group or website. So you have to be aware of the latest known bugs. Because in their forum, they may, there may be other users uh, posting some bugs. That you have to be aware of that. And you also have to be aware of those workarounds. Workarounds are just meaning the alternatives which means you don't have a way to do that, formal way to do that, but you can bypass that, or you have a tricky way to do it. To do it. And you have to ensure that you are using the latest version and the latest patches. The latest version may not be the most stable version, or it may not be the right version you are, use, you are using. So just keep tracking, keep track of your, uh, your versions. And I'll tell you how you can identify if an error comes from the software or from uh, your input. That would be very simple. You can just call the simple test problem. And in this way, you will be able to identify if it's software error. Right? So let me talk about this worker. Now, these things are not about, are not about the uh, error checking stage. I just want to emphasize this concept of workaround. So let's talk about several things. This is first thing, Tor Plaza. In those software packages like Transims or Visim, you don't have an option called Tor Plaza, right? Then how do you model a Tor Plaza in your simulation? First, you see there are several entrances, and near Tor Plaza, People, the drivers are going to switch their lanes very frequently, right? And this can be modeled by a multi-lane link or many links. Another thing is, at the top plaza, the vehicles have to stop and wait. They stop, wait for, uh, for, wait for several seconds and go. And that can be modeled by a stop sign or a signal, right? Then. At stop a uh, toll plaza, some vehicles are going to pay by cash. Some vehicles are going to pay by easy pass. And these things can be modeled by lane restrictions. So some vehicles are with easy pass device, so they that's one vehicle type. And there are other vehicle types with without easy pass. And they are not uh, the vehicles without easy pass. I mean the this vehicle type will not be able to travel on this easy pass lane. So these are some essential things you want to do when you are modeling a toll plaza. But basically you can use a mixture of uh, stop signs, traffic signals, and lane restrictions to do it. Right. Another thing, roundabout. In Vsim, you don't see any option of roundabout. And you don't see that in transims too. Uh, you have this in MSUM and COSIM, but let's think about if you don't have any option called roundabout, you could not put a roundabout object onto the network, then what can you do? 
basically, the roundabouts are modeled by this link. This is a link, approaching, approaching link. Then this part will be a connector or a link. So this is a curved link from here to there. And there will be another curved link from here to there. So basically, this will be a connection. This will be another connection. It will be connector or link. But it has to be curved. And those vehicles coming in have to yield to the vehicles traveling on these uh, within the roundabout. So there should be an yield sign. And that's the simplest way to uh, work on roundabout. So this is another workaround. The third thing is a bit complex. It's called TWLTL. Somebody still knowing what it is? Two way left turn lane. Yes, two way left turn lane. And in recent, we also mentioned that we don't have any option for two way left turn lane. And the way to model that is to have two, for example, here, here we have three lanes. This way, this lane going, going north, this lane going south, and here's two way left turn lane. The solution is we have one link here consisting two lanes, and another link here also consisting two lanes. But one of, one of the lane, I mean one lane here and one lane there are overlapping. And this overlap area can be marked as a conflict area in reason. And that's the way they call this two-way left turn lane. So these are workarounds. These are not any formal solutions. So this, this is not any uh, solution for uh, name two-way left turn lane, but you can use that technique to model it. OK. So let's go back to error checking. After reviewing the software errors, you have to review your inputs. And this can be divided into three steps. The first step is called link, uh, review link and node network. Firstly, you want to check your network connectivity. You want to check every intersection, every ramp, or every links are connected. So nowhere is uh, no place on your network is isolated unless you want you, you want it to be. And after checking this network connectivity, you can check the link attributes. The link attributes. Uh, I want to make uh, tell you that I'm introducing this in a systematic way, in a sequential way. So in the future, you can follow it. So in the future, when you are uh, reviewing your own network, your own model, please follow this procedure, and that will bring you some benefit. Okay, after checking on the network connectivity, you can check the link attributes. Each link has its lanes and number of lanes and speed limit and facility type and so on. And these are typically stored uh, in the attribute table of the link, uh, link layer. After that, you can go on to check the intersection controls. You have to make sure that every intersection has the right control type and the control data, so like signalized uh, intersections have their phasing plans, timing plans, these things should be correct. And after that, you have to check the prohibited turns. So some nodes, and at some intersections, vehicles may not be uh, permitted, uh, permitted to turn left or turn right. These have to be checked. And the last step is called lane restrictions. So some vehicles may not be allowed to travel on some, on some lanes. So after checking all of these, you can have a summary. And that can be a, a milestone for your error checking step. And after checking the network, you may want to check the demand. For demand, we have several things. The first thing is the vehicle mix proportion. And in your network, in a realistic network, we cannot expect that all the vehicles are passenger cars. So there must be some other vehicles, like trucks. And this, this should be checked. After that, you check the zone definitions for activity locations. So in MSUM, in those zone-based models, you check the zone definitions. You check if each zone is correctly put. 
But in models like transients uh, or models like Vsim, they have specific activity locations. In Vsim, it's called parking lots. And these things, these locations, have to be checked. After that, check the OB matrices if they are correctly input. And the fourth thing is to check about, uh, to check the vehicle uh, occupancy distribution. For example, if you are modeling high occupancy vehicles, then the high occupancy vehicles are generated by a distribution, and this should be checked. And after that, the turn percentages. This is used in COSIN on, on the freeway network. And at the freeway network, on the freeway network, they have the turn percentages, and this should be checked if appropriate. So this is a checklist for you. After the checking these, please check the vehicle, vehicle characteristics, including vehicle types and dimensions. So you want to make sure that each vehicle is having a correct length, and the vehicle types are correct. And these performance specifications, like their horsepower, acceleration and deceleration, and so on. So here uh, is the list of things you have to check. So when you are calibrating, when you, uh, before you calibrate your model, I mean, when you are doing the error checking, make sure these things have already been checked and generate a report. For checking activity locations, here is an example that, uh, of our previous project. In transims, you know, when we generate uh, the model generated the network using transims net. Activity locations will be distributed along each link. In this model, we have a collaborative junction or an interchange. And this is also a link. So some activity locations will be automatically put on these ramps. And that's very unrealistic. So in the error checking stage, we had to manually remove these activity locations. Right. So that was an example. Here are some tips for you. I think that will be useful. First thing is after you code your network, overlay your network over the satellite images. So you can see if they are perfectly matched. This is, this is the first tip. The second tip is to use color codes, to use colors to identify your links by their attributes. In this way, you will easily uh, identify those out-of-range attributes. For example, if you want all of them to be within a range, then you use another spe special color to identify those attributes outside the range. In this way, you can easily identify where or which links are having these out-of-range attributes. Another tip, if you have a continuity, for example, you have, have a series of links, and they should all be of this attribute. For example, the speed limit of them should be the same. 